Hi, this is Brian with ActiveMelody.com. Well, this week we're going to be learning some Willie Nelson style licks, and I'm going to show you how to play them, and I'm also going to show you how to incorporate them into your own playing by tying them back to some basic chord shapes so that you can play these licks in any key. And Willie was a tough one to do because his timing is all over the place, and that's part of what makes him so cool to me. He's, he seems to play in the moment, and nothing is rehearsed, or that's the way it comes off anyway. That goes for his vocals and his guitar playing as well. But a challenging guy to try and copy, and so I had to try and get it into a metronome so that I could put it in tablature and all of that. So this is my version of Willie Nelson style licks, but I think you're going to like these, and they're a lot of fun to play. And this is very slow and laid back. So I've got the lesson split into two parts. In this video, we're going to take a look at the first half. If you'd like to watch the second half and get the tablature and the MP3 jam track so that you can practice playing all of those lead licks, you can get that by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page, and do a search for EP263. Alright, so one of the things I notice about the way that Willie approaches lead is he's tying everything back to some basic chord shapes. And that's the way that I like to play as well. I think it makes it easier. You can target certain chord tones to make your lead sound more interesting, but then you have a place to anchor everything to. So I'll explain that as we get into it. The song that we're going to be playing is in, in the key of E, and it's a 1-4-5 chord progression. Very basic. So our one chord is an E chord, the four chord is an A, and then the five chord is a B7 chord. And the way that I play the rhythm goes like this. Very Willy style rhythm, you know? Laid back. Let me show you how to do that. I know I'm going to get questions. It's simple to do. I'm just playing an E chord in first position. I'm starting on the open sixth string, and then I'm doing a hammer-on with my middle finger on the fifth string. Just that open A to the fifth string on the second fret there back and forth. So that's a little sidebar, but that's how I was playing the rhythm part. Um, okay, so it started with this. Let me show you how to play that, and then I'll show you how to think about it, and then I'll show you the timing for how to count that in. Now all I'm doing is I'm, I'm mentally I'm going to the E chord up here. So this is using the A chord shape. This is out of the caged system. So if you think of playing an A chord down in first position, where you bar there on the second fret, you just slide that all the way up. So now we're barring on the ninth fret. And then you've got your index finger on the seventh fret, fifth string. So you're playing five, four, three, and two. So that's an E chord up here in this position. And I started with an E sus two chord. Now a sus uh, just means, so you see that written SUS, it just means suspended. And you can have a sus two chord or a sus four chord. And all it means is you've eliminated the third interval out of the chord. A chord is made up of the one, the three, and the five uh, interval. And we're going to take that third out, right? So, uh, so if we're just playing the major scale, for example, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, um, we're going to take out the third, and we're going to play just the second. So we're going to play, that's a sus two, or we're going to play just the fourth. That's a sus4. Now the reason I'm making a deal out of that is because that's, first of all, how we're starting the song, but I want you to remember this going forward when you're improvising. If you're playing something in a different key, for example, the key of D, using that D, same chord shape, you can... See how nice that sounds? And this is something that Willie uses quite a bit. He's dancing around between that sus2 and sus4. And you can create these really cool melodies out of these chord shapes. So just remember that. So that's how we're starting it in E. Um, so what I'm doing to, to play that is I'm on the ninth fret, and I've got my middle finger down on the fourth string, my ring finger is on the third string, both in the ninth fret, and then my index finger is on the seventh fret, second string. And I'm going to play four, three, two. And then I'm going to hit the second string again and slide it up to the ninth fret second string. So that's how I started. Right? And you can see I'm just basically tracing the notes out of this chord shape. So that way, you can, if you connect that lick, what you just played there, back to this chord shape, you can do it in any key now. Here it is in C. You don't even have to think about it once you can do that. Associate it with the chord. Okay, so... And then the next thing I played was a little half bend. Now Willie is playing on a nylon string guitar, and, and because of that, he can't do you can't do full bends on a nylon string. It's really hard to do. So, you, but you can do half bends, and he does quite a bit of bending, little half bends like that. 
So if you listen to a song like Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain, there's some great versions of that on YouTube. Um, that's a huge, huge guitar song for me. It's just so powerful the way that he plays it. Uh, and the way that he does the lead in that is is this note. And so that's on the ninth fret, second string, you do a half bend. I did it twice, released it. And then I came down to the seventh fret, second string, and then the ninth fret, third string. So backing up from the beginning, we have. That's the first little phrase. Now the timing of this, to count this in, it comes in after the and of three. So you go one, and, two, and, three, and. As soon as you say and out of the three, you go ahead and start that note. So you'll you'll hear that on the click track when you're listening to the jam track to play along. You hear the, the, the four clicks at the beginning. Just rem wait till after the third click to start. Okay, now then the second time I, I played this pretty much the same thing. I just changed the timing a little bit. I went... Just went straight through it. So that's uh, fourth string, third string, and second string out of that E sus2 chord. And then back to that note. Now this time, just to keep it a little different, a little more interesting, I went... So I didn't bend it. And I got this um, out of, I think it was also Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain. This... I saw him, uh, Willie, do this, where what he's doing, again, there's your E chord shape. I'm playing this note now out of that chord shape, so that'd be the ninth fret, uh, fourth string. And then my ring finger comes up here to the tenth fret, second string. Now, what I'm playing there, in essence, is an E sus4 chord. So if you think of, you started with that sus2, now you're playing a sus4. So then to play that, I just played the uh, ninth fret, fourth string. 10th fret, 2nd string, 9th fret, 2nd string, 7th fret, 2nd string, and I've hit that one twice, and then down to the 9th fret, 3rd string. So we have... And then I did another classic Willie move to go down to the 7th of the chord. So he's thinking E7. Even though he's not playing the chord, he's just doing single strings. By playing that note, it goes ahead and hints at where the song is going to go. You can already hear it. And so um, all you have to think about for this is if you know this chord shape, right? Your E chord using this chord shape. If you play it like this, you're playing an E7. That's where we're barring all six strings there on the 7th fret. Your pinky's on the 9th fret 2nd string. Your ring finger's on the 9th fret 4th string. But you're still playing those middle four strings. That's how you can turn that E into an E7. But what makes it the 7 is that note. And that's what he did. He walked right down to that note. So you can remember that, out, that little chromatic walk down out of this chord shape. So if you're playing in C, you can quickly, from a lead perspective, pull out the, that 7th note out of that, uh, out of that chord shape. All right, let me back up from the beginning and play it up to that point. So we have one and two and three and. That's another thing. You can slide into it to give it a little more of a bluesy feel. And then, a classic Willie bass walk-up thing. He does a lot of those. And so after we, after you play that seventh note, I came down and hit the open string, which is easy because obviously you don't have to fret it. And that gives me enough chance, uh, enough time rather, to come down here to the second fret fourth string with my index finger. So I'm playing, uh, I, and actually I'm hybrid picking that. So I'm picking on the sixth string with my pick, and I'm using my ring finger to pluck the fourth string. So I'm going six, four, six, four, six, four, six. Those are the string numbers. So the way I'm fretting that, and these are just notes that are an octave apart. So these are both E notes. These are gonna be F sharp notes. So I'm gonna come to the second fret, uh, sixth string, and then I put my pinky, some of you may want to use your ring finger for this, but that's going to be the fourth fret, fourth string. 
then we're going to come up to the fourth fret with our index finger, do the same thing, and then up to that A note. So nice little walk up. Now the way that Willie does it, and I got this lick for, uh, right out of uh, Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain, is he goes from the E to the F, then to the F sharp, and then up to the A flat, and then to the A. Um, I just didn't have enough time in the timing of this to, to add in that F, but that's how he does it. But it's the same principles, that up to the A. Now once we're in the A, we're, we're up to the four chord, um, I went ahead and switched gears in my mind instead of thinking of, you know, the E chord shape, now I'm thinking of the A chord shape. And so since uh, I'm already up here, I'm thinking about playing an A chord here, which is just an A major bar chord. That's where these three fingers are making up the E chord shape. You can start to see how important the cage system is and why it's important to learn your chord shapes in different positions on the neck. That's how you're able to take advantage of all these strings. But you just take your E chord down to first position, you slide it up, and then you bar here to simulate the nut with your finger uh, on the fifth fret. But we're not gonna play the bar chord, but I'm just showing you that's where we're at mentally. Um, so once we came up, I went. Sounds uh, very cool, and it's just three notes out of, this, out of this bar chord. Instead of making the full bar chord, I just took those three notes out of it. So my ring finger's on the seventh fret, fourth string, my middle finger's on the sixth fret, third string, and my index fingers on the fifth fret second string. So it's four, three, two, and then I slide up to the seventh fret on the second string. And then there's this really cool walk down that goes. So all I'm doing for that sounds bigger than it is. It's very simple because it's just one finger on the fretboard. And I'm just walking down the major scale for E. Now remember, I've, I've mentioned this in many lessons. You kind of have these two paths you can take when you're soloing. You can either stay in the key of a song or you can play the chord changes. And you, or you can do both. And that's what we're doing in this lesson. We're playing the, we've started off playing the chord changes. I was dancing around the E, then I danced around the A. As the chord changes, I'm kind of changing my scale to match that. But then, even though the song is still in the four chord, it's still in the A, I'm going to go ahead and switch gears back to the E major scale. So I'm going to walk right down the E major scale. So that's the fifth fret second string. Hopefully that makes sense. Fifth fret second string. And then I slide it down. So we go from the 5th fret to the 4th fret to the 2nd fret, all on the 2nd string. And then I take my hand off the fretboard to play that open B string, or the open 2nd string. Now what gives it the really fat sound is by hitting the open 1 string with it, which is your E string. Remember, we're in the key of E, so you can always play that note with anything you're going to be doing. So if you're playing something on the 2nd string, you might as well take advantage of that 1st string. That's how I'm playing it. And then I came to the second fret third string and slid up to the fourth fret on the third string. Back to the second fret, then down to the first fret. Second fret, first fret. So we have like that. And you could do a, a hammer ons with that or pick it, however you. Whatever is easier for you there. But that's the way. That's played. And there is where the E chord is, right? And all I'm doing is targeting that note out of the E chord. It'd be the same as if I was playing an E sus4 chord. Remember, back to that sus. With my pinky. You can do that with a full chord, but I'm just hitting the single note. Alright, so I think that's a good stopping point in this video. In the next video, we'll go through the rest of the lead. And if you're not a premium member, you should look into it because you'll have access to all of the video material, all of the tablature, the on-screen tab viewer, the, the MP3 jam track to practice, all that stuff. If you're serious about learning to play, it's incredibly affordable and you have access to the entire back catalog of over 300 and something lessons that are in-depth like this. So uh, lots of material to, to go through. 
All right, let me back up and play through this one more time, and then I'll see you in the part two video. So here we go. One, and two, and three, and...